hello and happy new year. I'm Sandy Alnock and today I will be doing a little Dr. Seuss inspired Bible journaling. Okay, it's God inspired, but he took me to Dr. Seuss and he took me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. And though I don't know what those are for 2021, I do know they're going to be amazing. And I trust God because he's been faithful to me in the past. Well, I've had this page for this verse held in limbo for, shall we say, years. I did the page that you can see ghosting through. And there's a few little spots where it bled through. There's just on the, it's a jester's hat on the other side. And you can see the little black lines in a few places coming through. It went through because I scribbled over and over and over trying to make those lines heavier. That's why it bled through. Generally, a micron pen doesn't bleed through. But in this particular case, it did. And it was either going to be gesso this page and do something to it so I could get rid of that little bit of, of bother that was in my way or find an image that could cover that in some way. And as I was reading through 1 Corinthians, I was just amazed that God not only took me to this verse again, and I looked at that page again thinking, when am I going to come up with an image that's going to work? And he got me thinking about the book. And I looked up the book cover and found some really funky, fun images on it. So you can Google for that and, and find on all the places you will go, there's a castle, there's a little kind of round archway. There's a balloon flying through the air. And I'm not replicating those images exactly, but I'm going to put a big castle up here and I'm focusing my lines on the areas that we're showing through from the other side. So you can kind of tell that I'm following those, but I'm making a funky castle. It can be anything. It doesn't really matter what it is. Even some of those little things hanging off the top, I made little bubbles hanging off there, little signs just to make it sort of mimic what's on the other side showing through. And I'll show you at the end of the video what the other side looks like. But it was really cool to figure out that this kind of an image was going to work really well for this. So if you have any pages that have something crazy on the other side, see if there's an image you can draw that will match up with that. The other thing I'll be doing is using colored pencil on this side because colored pencil is less transparent than a lot of other mediums. I mean, you could use acrylics and that sort of thing, but I don't use acrylics all that very often in my Bible. So color pencils work better than something like watercolor because they cover up what's behind there, or at the very least, they distract from it. The colors on this do need to be dark enough that they hide anything behind it, and nothing's going to hide it 100 gazillion percent. But I can put all kinds of fun details into this to make things sort of disappear. Well, the cover of the book has an orange building on top, and then there's orange underneath of the archway. So then I switch to a yellow, because that's the color that the book cover has on it. And you don't even have to stay true to the book cover colors. You could make it any color you want. But since I like yellow, it was always fun to put some yellow in there and just scribble in some, some color. Then I started working on a little bit of detail. And I looked at the book cover and got some ideas for a couple of the shapes. I started them in pencil so I could sort of get an idea where I wanted to put some lines and just put in heavier orange pencil and then went in with my micron pen and started drawing things in. Now, this is a little, I guess, porchway that they show on the cover of the book. And then I gave up on that and just kind of started drawing in my own Kind of shapes, not really worrying about what was on the book cover, but of course you can get inspiration from Dr. Seuss books because all of those buildings are kind of crazy shaped and all that sort of thing. And then I just kind of doodled through it. So it's really fun when the Lord just grabs you by the scruff of the neck and says, here's an idea for the artwork. Because the whole concept of, oh, the places you will go is very similar to the way that I'm really praying that 2021 is going to be, that God is going to do amazing things. And as I said, I trust him. I know he's going to. 
after the year we've been through, for some people I know it's going to be really hard to imagine that things are going to get better, but they're going to get better. It's going to get better. And the fact that God is already ahead of us in into the year, he knows what's coming. He's preparing us for it. He has prepared us for it. He's given us all we need. And we need to just not be freaked out about it and, and just be looking for him. I, I do tend to find that if I look for where God is working, he tends to show up more. Now, I know it's not that he wasn't there if I wasn't looking for him, but we as humans are kind of a failure in some ways in which we really, if we don't look for something, we don't see it. We get distracted with the things that we already have on our plate. And if we don't keep our eyes peeled for where God is, where he's acting, we're going to end up in trouble because we won't see him. So back to the artwork, I was kind of looking at the page to see what colors I wanted to use on things like the balloon. The balloon is yellow and purple on the book cover, and I decided to bring in a little bit of the green too, partially because if I had made that stripe yellow, there was a little more showing through, and I wanted to skip that part because there was a little darker spots in there, and the green would cover it better. But you could, of course, also change that up entirely and make them all whatever kind of colors you want to. But I thought it would be most indicative of being a Dr. Seuss book if I kind of copied the colors a little bit. There is a little person, by the way, that's just a squiggle in the basket at the bottom of the balloon. So don't worry about drawing anything really careful or whatever. Just make it something where you know that that's a person in there and that's good enough. For the sky, I used a nice bright blue and started blending it out a little bit to the left-hand side just so it doesn't have a really sharp, hard edge because I have these buildings and I was trying to figure out how I was going to join the text from the scripture with the art. And you'll see that part at the very end. Well, or at least in a few minutes, <laughs> you'll see that. I finished up coloring all the sky in here. I love all this bright color. And then added in some green down at the bottom. In order to flatten the page, by the way, all I did was take the pencil on the back of the Bible page, and I basically curled the paper around it to flatten it. It's just something that happens when you're coloring with your, your colored pencils and use, using pressure on the paper, and the pressure causes it to just curl up slowly, and that happens, and it's not anything permanent. It will flatten out over time, too. So here's where I decided to join the scripture text with some more of the buildings, and I did a row of the orange buildings, and then a row of the yellow buildings underneath of it. And then I could add the pen work to it and add some detail just for fun. And it, it kind of just connects it so it's clear which verse that I was journaling from. And then took my uh, Micron pen. And this one is a number one, by the way. I keep a selection of several different uh, colors, or different, different colors, different sizes. I have some other colors too, I don't use them very often, but I definitely have different sizes for different applications. And I decided I wanted that balloon to be a little heavier, so I went over the line, and I'm terrible at doing that in a consistent way, so I had to go back and forth, and it was, yeah, a little bit weird there. That is how on the other side I had gone through. So fortunately, since this was doing it over top of pencil, that protected the other side. So then we have the text that I wanted to put on this is instead of, oh, where you, the places you'll go is, oh, where you'll take me. And really just looking for the places that God is going to take me in my life in this coming time period. What's this going to look like? Where is he going to have me ministering as we are still in a pandemic year? Well, pandemic, pandemic second year, is that what we call this now? It's not fully a year yet, so I'm going to still call it a year. So we're going to be slowly coming out of this and getting back, hopefully, to something more normal by the end of the year. Cannot wait for that. It's going to be so nice to be able to return to the life that we used to know. Hopefully, though, this is not a wasted time that we will forget what we've been through as well. 
Now that is my Posca pen, which is terrible at doing the white lettering, so I had to go over it twice. And then I ended up even doing an outline around it with the black pen. And again, since this is going over top of pencil, it's not going to bleed through because the pencil basically protects the paper as it uh, as the ink sits on top of the pencil instead. Next, I added some more doodling. I am a doodler at heart, and I just loved adding all the windows and doors and extra flags and crosses and signs and everything on these. And I could probably spend quite a time on this. Maybe I'll have to do just a separate Dr. Seuss drawing. I love the fact that the architecture doesn't have to make sense on these. That buildings don't have a start and an end and they can pile up in crazy, irresponsibly architectural ways. <laughs> It'd be lots of fun. Well, here's the other side of the page. And you can see that neither one of them now is disturbed by the other side of the paper. So it's kind of nice to have that solution for some of your pages. So if you've got one that can handle having a drawing done on the other side and some colored pencil coloring, then you too can cover up some ghosting and a minor bit of bleeding without using any page prep or gesso or anything. All right, I will see you guys next week. Take care and have a wonderful, wonderful first week of the new year. Bye-bye.